Today we will talk about the loopback of a sound card at different levels, and their respective applications. Almost every computer is equipped with a sound card. A sound card is usually used as an audio recording and replaying device. From test and measurement point of view, it is a dual channel ADC device for signal input, and also a dual channel DAC device for signal output. It usually has a bit depth of 16 or 24, a sampling rate of up to a few hundred kilohertz, and an analog bandwidth from a few hertz to up to 100 kilohertz. With a built-in gain adjustment, it can measure voltages from a few micro volts to a few volts. With a proper software, such as multi-instrument from Burton's technology, you can turn your computer into an oscilloscope, a spectrum analyzer, signal generator, audio analyzer, data logger, and so on. The purpose of sound card loopback is to feed the signal from the sound card signal generator into the input of the sound card oscilloscope, so that the signal can be processed, analyzed, and displayed, with or without external connection. In multi-instrument, the loopback of a sound card's input and output can be established at four different levels, namely, software level, sound card mixer level, external cable level, and DUT level. Each loopback level has its own usage. Loopback mode 1. Loopback at software level. Great for demonstration of different waveforms and their spectra under ideal condition in class. Software loopback is established at software level without involving any hardware. This is the ideal case where the signal contains no noise and distortion introduced by hardware. In multi-instrument, we can establish this loopback by selecting the AIA equals to OA and IB equals to OB on the signal generator panel. It means that the input of channel A equals to the output of channel A, and the input of channel B equals to the output of channel B. Now, we can generate a 1 kHz sine waveform. Zoom in the see the detailed waveform, and the peak frequency is correctly detected in the spectrum analyzer. The spectral line of the 1 kHz looks a bit wide. This is because the apparent FFT frequency resolution equals to sampling frequency over FFT size. The current sampling frequency is 48 kHz and the FFT size is 1024. This gives an frequency resolution of about 47 Hz. Now, we change it to 32768, thus we get a frequency resolution of 1.5 Hz. We have said just now that the sine waveform is ideal and contains no noise and distortion. How to prove it? Let's right click anywhere within the spectrum analyzer window, select spectrum analyzer processing, and then select THD, THD plus N, SINET, SNR, NL. The distortion and noise values of the generated sine wave are shown on the top of the spectrum graph. The font may be too small to see in this video. Let's use the DDP viewer to see these values. Click the DDP viewer button in the toolbar. Select THDDB underscore A in the derived data point selection box. Click the DDP viewer button again. Select THDNDB underscore A in the derived data point selection box. We can rename it to THD plus N for channel A. As you can see, the total harmonic distortion of the sine wave is minus 97.23 dB and total harmonic distortion plus noise is also minus 97.23 dB. You might think these values are not so impressive, but they are obtained under a bit depth of 16, which has only a theoretical dynamic range of 96 dB. Let's change the bit depth of the oscilloscope and signal generator to 24. The dynamic range now is 144.5 dB. Generate the sine wave, 
now the THD and THD and N are about minus 145 dB. Impressive enough, now, we generate a 1 kHz square wave. As you can see in the oscilloscope, the square waveform looks ideal. In the spectrum analyzer, we see a fundamental spectral line at 1 kHz and odd harmonic spectral lines at 3 kHz, 5 kHz, 7 kHz, etc. Let's examine the amplitude of each frequency components. Right click anywhere within the spectrum analyzer window, select spectrum analyzer processing, and then select harmonics. The relative RMS amplitude of the fundamental and each harmonics are displayed on the top of the spectrum graph. Let's display these values in DDP viewer so that we can see them clearly. Select F1 RMS underscore A for the of the fundamental. Select F3 RMS underscore A for the third harmonics. Select F5 RMS underscore A for the fifth harmonics. And select F7 RMS underscore A for the seventh harmonics. Now, if we normalize these values using the fundamental one, we get a ratio of 1, 2, 1 third, 2, 1 fifth, 2, 1 seven. Exactly the same as the theoretical square wave. Loop back mode 2, loop back at sound card mixer level. Great for demonstration of the operation of oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, and signal generator under real condition. Unlike many other PC-based data acquisition cards or oscilloscopes, the output of a sound card can be hardwired internally to the its input using software configuration without any external cable. This feature is well known in audio recording industry where people use it to record the audio that is being output by the sound card. For example, you can use this feature to record the sound or music in the YouTube video. This loopback path involves parts of the sound card hardware and thus some noise and distortion will be introduced in multi-instrument. To establish this loopback, stop the oscilloscope and the signal generator, and then go to setting, ADC device. Select sound card MME in device model selection box, then in device number selection box, select a device called something like, stereo mix, wave out mix, what you hear, and so forth. If you cannot find anything like that, then go to Windows Control Panel Hardware and Sound, Sound Recording Right click anywhere and select Show Disabled Devices Now, an additional device called Stereo Mix is shown Right click on it and select Enable Now, we go to Multi Instrument Setting ADC device, and select stereo mix in the device number selection box. Now, we can demonstrate some frequently used operations of the oscilloscope and signal generator. Let's generate a 1 kHz sine wave for both channels. Under normal trigger mode, we can adjust the trigger edge. trigger level or simply drag the arrow here then adjust the trigger delay or simply drag the marker here.
Now we generate 1 kHz sine wave in channel A and 1001 Hz sine wave in channel B. The waveform display of channel A is stable while that of channel B is not. This is because the current trigger source is channel A. Select channel B to be the trigger source. Now channel B is stable but channel A is not. As the frequency difference between the two channels are very small, only 1 Hz. We can observe the well-known beat phenomenon. The oscilloscope is in dual channel mode, now change to A plus B mode. We can clearly see the 1 Hz beat frequency. Then a minus B mode. Finally listen juice pattern. Loop back at the sound card mixer level has hardware introduced distortion and noise. Let's check it out using the predefined THD measurement setting in the hot panel setting toolbar. Click the THD button. And then start the signal generator. The measured THD is minus 81.49 dB and THD plus N is minus 78.35 dB under 16-bit mode. Change the bit depth of the oscilloscope and signal generator to 24-bit. And retest. The measured THD becomes minus 81.33 dB and THD plus N becomes minus 78.57 dB, almost no improvement than the case of 16 bits for this particular sound card. Compared with the loop back at software level, loop back at sound card mixer level contains hardware introduced distortion and noise. Loop back mode 3, loop back at external cable level. Or called hardwired loop back used to check the overall quality of a sound card. Loop back at the external cable level involves more sound card hardware in the loop and thus has higher distortion and noise than loop back at sound card mixer level. To establish this loop back, we use an external loop back cable to short the speaker out jack to the mic in jack of the computer's built-in sound card. Stop the oscilloscope and signal generator, go to setting, ADC device, in device number selection box, change stereo mix to microphone then click the THD button in the hot panel setting toolbar to load the pre-configured THD measurement setting start the measurement the peak level indicator at the upper right corner of the software shows that the input of the sound card is saturated click the microphone icon in the toolbar it opens the recording control panel right click the microphone and select properties then levels Reduce the gain. Now, the peak level is around 90% without clipping. Wait for the 10 frames moving average to complete after the last gain adjustment. The measured THD is minus 40.26 dB and THD plus N is minus 40.26 dB under 16-bit mode. Compared with the loopback at software level and mixer level, 
hardwired loopback using an external cable contains more hardware introduced distortion and noise. Loopback Mode 4, Loopback at DUT level. Used to measure the characteristics of a device under test. The purpose of loopback at DUT level is to measure the characteristics of the DUT, such as frequency response and distortion. While the frequency response of the sound card itself can be compensated, it is difficult, if not impossible, to compensate the distortion and noise level of the sound card itself. Therefore, the quality of the sound card should be checked using the aforementioned hardwired loopback, before it can be used to measure the DUT. Generally, the performance of the sound card should be at least higher than that of the DUT in order to get meaningful results. Verdon's Technology Turn a PC into multiple virtual instruments.